what drives cost in labs? And one of the things, if some of you have been involved in the construction of a technical facility or a lab, you have heard the words MEP. And MEP, if you don't know, is mechanical, electrical, and plumbing. And those are the three major cost drivers, plus your laboratory furniture and the laboratory fume hoods and, and the equipment that drive the cost of a lab. And in a typical lab facility, these three items can be 50% of the total cost. So the focus on design elements, which can mitigate cost and make this more efficient, are very, very critical for us. And it's what the most people that are in our business are trying to spend time with clients focusing on. When we talk about the, the HVAC systems, you know, clean medical device manufacturing and labs require significant amounts of HVAC. They require significant air changes per hour. Now, we, we, we're, we're kind of used to that in a clean room environment where we're dealing with copious air, air changes, but labs also can have some very significant issues in fact, that, that affect the air changes. The other thing is certain processes in a lab, certain processes in a manufacturing facility require once through air. And when you hear someone talk about 100% outside air or once through air, what does that mean? And it means that we have to bring in, continually bring in new air, new makeup air for that facility because the air cannot be recirculated. This building we're in right now, the air conditioning system is recirculating air. It's not, uh, it, it's from an energy standpoint very efficient because we're able to not have to either reheat or recool to the same de degree, but in a laboratory or a technical facility, many times the contaminants or the fumes can invalidate a process. They have to be exhausted one time. Or there could be health and safety issues where we have to exhaust fumes and get those out of the lab. So the HVAC systems and the volume of air which we push through labs is extremely high. The electrical systems, pretty straightforward in the sense that we have to have power to run the, the mechanical systems, which are quite significant. We also have a lot of clean, dedicated circuits. You're also going to have backup generators for mission critical tasks. And then in some cases where we're dealing with solvents or some corrosives or some chemicals which have uh, the flammability issues, you're gonna be dealing with explosion proof, explosion proof switches and devices throughout the lab. Pl plumbing, process piping. We've been involved, and many of you may have been involved in everything that are many, many carrier gases and nitrogen to argon to running instrumentation equipment to cryogenic issues. There's many, many plumbing issues that are involved in a lab. Many of our labs and many of your facilities will have ultra-pure water in them. If it's certainly from a pharmaceutical manufacturing side, if you're uh, in a basic laboratory, you have deionized water loops, which, which are really fairly typical in these, in these types of labs. And then from a furniture standpoint, when you see the specialized fume hoods and the specialized modular furniture, many of you, if you have these types of facilities, you realize there's, there's a, a myriad of manufacturers throughout the world which make some, some very fine products that get are installed in these labs can be quite significant cost drivers. So it's one of those things that we want to try to understand what, what drives cost. Then we did a white paper several years ago Someone will always come and say, what's the average cost of a lab? What will it cost me to build my facility? So we went and we did a nice scatter chart and we, we came up with all the cost per foot. And if you can believe in arithmetic mean, you don't want to because if for my statistics fans here, if you can compute the standard deviation from the various costs per foot, the arithmetic mean is somewhat of a meaningless number. It's very important that we get a team together, you would get a team together, who can be involved in understanding what drives the cost on the MEP systems. If you don't understand the MEP systems, it's very, very difficult for us to determine what is your estimated budget, what is the cost. So that's kind of the setup for this. The reason it's important for the lab design and the trends is these are expensive facilities. They're not facilities that we build over and over again. They're ones that once they're built, we want to do it right and that is one of the issues that's now driving a lot of the trends which we're seeing. We'll go through this. You know, three of the, three of the major trends which, which, which LCS has seen. 
in, especially in the last 10, 10 years, is flexible labs. You will hear the word flexible. How can we reconfigure a lab? The other trend that we've seen is open labs. There were year, years ago, we tend to have a more parochial view, little provincial concepts where every investigator and every scientist, I have my own little area, I don't want to share it. The world now is much more where we share our resources. We work together, and that's created the need for collaborative spaces. It's an area where people can meet and visit and exchange ideas and have good breakout sessions from, from their labs. So when we look at the flexible labs, this was actually a, a, a picture of one. What you'll see is that the utility chases, and when we say chases, it's those pipes, it's the rundowns where you're bringing down gas services, you're bringing electrical services or data. If you'll see in this picture here, what you're, what you're seeing is, is these things coming out of the ceiling. It allows for quick reconfiguration. I'm not going to say it's always a totally in inexpensive, but if we stop and think about the cost of tearing out fixed furniture, sawing up a slab to redo service lines, it is one of the things that we're seeing people willing to put the money in up front to allow for the flexibility. We've personally been involved in some facilities that actually have overhead waste systems. Now that's kind of hard to understand that, wow, I'm going to pump laboratory waste above my head. But if you think about it, we're not dealing with huge volumes here. And we have, there are systems in place now, very safe, very secure. And think about the ability now to reconfigure your lab without, from a drain line standpoint, a lot of times we, we feel like people get constrained by the plumbing systems that are already installed and the drain systems in. You don't want to go in and jackhammer up your and saw cut your entire lab up. So it's really important. These are the types of new trends which, which uh, we are seeing, seeing. And while there can be a little bit more cost on the front end, ultimately we are seeing significant savings when you reconfigure a lab. There can be missions change. Here was another shot here of one and this was just a picture where you can literally see we, we left the top where you can see the service lines coming down to a to a work area this particular lab could be easily moved torn out and move, moved around you don't lose your furniture you don't damage these things what we can do is we're looking at how can we reconfigure a lab for a new mission next thing we talked about was open labs this is a much more of the of the processes that we see now.